win it! Wow! Oh man, it being just posterized, Russell Westbrook! You love the Philadelphia Eagles! Let me get a hell yeah! What is up, everybody? It is Dives, Mr. Crockpot on Twitter. Welcome to Party on Broad. The Philadelphia Eagles just defeated the Dallas Cowboys 17-9, moving into 8-7 and seven and in the first place. Joining us today, we have Jack Connell. Follow him on Twitter at JackConnellTPL. What's up, Jack? What's going on? You know, great Eagles win. One more playoffs. Let's do it. Let's do it. Let's do it. Make sure you check out Jack's podcast. Uh, post position. Anything you want to like plug in before we get started? I mean, nothing. We just had a great podcast the other day. I had on NBA agent Scott Nichols, who's most well known for representing 76 Sixers James Ennis. We talked a lot about the inside industry, some stuff that's not really well known about being agent. It's really cool. Some information I didn't know about. You guys should check it out. Awesome, awesome stuff. Make sure you check out Post Position Pod. Woo! Lot to talk about in this game. A lot of positives to talk about this Eagles versus Dallas game, and we have to lead off. With Carson Wentz, he finished the game with 31, uh, 31 for 40 for 319 yards and a t- touchdown. He had a 108.2 quarterback rating. Uh, Carson was just, it was just a statement game for Carson. This was the biggest game of his career. And what can I say? There were t- several times when he felt pressure. He ducked. He made plays. He rolled out of the pocket. He was moving out of the pocket, making plays. Dude. Just a phenomenal game by Carson Wentz. And, I mean, when you look at at the other side in terms of Dak Prescott, yeah, there were a lot of drops by the Dallas Cowboys. But, dude, there were a lot of missed throws by Dak Prescott. There is no doubt in my mind that Carson Wentz won this game. Uh, What was your take on Carson Wentz in this game? I mean, he did great. I mean, he was making some great reads. There's obviously a few negatives I'll touch on shortly. First off, I mean, the only really bad throw that I can remember really off the top of my head was, well, there's two. There was the miscommunication between him and Dallas Goddard. I don't know who was in the wrong there. I mean, that was a little bit of a bummer. I mean, he made a great job uh, drive besides that one. And then that screen, it was on like third and 22. He had Boston Sky, I believe it was Boston Sky. I forget it was him or Miles Sanders. He had him, but he kind of threw it into the third because, I mean, there was a D end kind of coming up, but he kind of, he could have gotten to his power as Boston Sky. I mean, that's just nitpicking a little bit. He did a pretty great job. I mean, there was a strip sack that, I mean, again, that really wasn't his fault. I mean, he seemed to have one every game, but his throws were great. I mean, his reads were good. He's making calls on the line. He was doing all his usual stuff. His athleticism was there. He had a couple good runs, breaking free. Overall, I mean, he did pretty well. I mean, he really didn't have any issues. The one stat I did see that was kind of interesting, it was, if I did he, he didn't have an interception this game, did he? Nope. In his all of his eight wins, he has thrown zero interceptions. There it is. So mistake-free football, baby. Um, I got to go. My next major two takeaways, and I have been dogging these people over the last, like, you know, four months, and that is Jim Schwartz, and that is Sidney Jones. And Jim Schwartz gave up only nine points. You know, defensive line be damned because they didn't really do anything to des- to Dak Prescott on the defensive line. They- there's really no pressure, especially in that second half. But the, but the secondary came to play today. Malcolm Jenkins was all over the field. And my boy, I knew was I knew it all along, right? Sidney Jones <laughs> made the play of his career in the end zone on that fourth down. I'm just joking. I, I just, I completely, I, I was Sidney Jones' number one fan. Not so much this season. I kind of uh, faded out. But uh, man, uh, what was your take on Jim Schwartz and the overall defense? I... I was not very <laughs> impressed with this performance. The one thing, I, there was a couple, I'll go from the defensive lineup. The first thing that I saw that really wasn't that impressive me, it, it's been every game this year. I really hadn't had much opportunity to watch a lot of these games I've been working, but I've been able to catch a little bit. It seems like late in the game or these third down situations, he opts for a full on speed rush, which is he, he has his defensive ends on the outside rush, and then he moves his defensive tackles into a three tech, which is like outside the guards. And he kind of leaves the underneath in the middle, the underneath unprotected, which is they're trying to hopefully get an outside beat and get it on deck. But the thing is, if you don't get one of those four, he steps right up in and he has a couple extra seconds or he can scramble. And that really has seemed to hurt them a little bit. He gets those two extra seconds, which are vital and he gets a throw out. And that's just been huge for Dallas. The one thing I saw in this game that was kind of bothering me late is they were in some sort of cover two zone 
I believe, or some sort of zone defense that was leaving. They were sending out the linebackers out towards like the hook curls, but the middle zone was just left completely wide open. And I really don't feel like that was a player fault. I feel like that was a schematic error. I mean, that could be easily fixed with a spy, but there were several play stoppages, and he really did do anything to adjust it. That huge, I believe, was Vinnie Curry sack on that third of four. Dak had a wide open, I believe it was Ezekiel Elliott or the other running back was wide open right in the middle for a first down, but he wasn't able to get to it. And it was just killing them an entire drive. If there's 45 seconds left and you got 80 yards to go, sure. But you have two minutes, two and a half minutes to go, and you're giving them 10 yards to pop on those, you can't be doing that. And the secondary was just getting so lucky with drop balls, overthrow passes. They, if, if they were playing another team like an Aaron Rodgers or a very good quarterback or they would have been toast. I mean, they would have been done for. That's my opinion. I really was not. I mean, they had a couple big plays, obviously, with Fletcher Cox, fumble. I mean, there was a lot of good plays, but they put, they tackled great, which I know you'll probably talk about in a little bit. But it just really bothered me how that defense scheming and everything was just set up. Uh, between the Sixers and the Eagles, there is not one person that is more tired about talking about a zone defense than right here, man. <laughs> I'm tired, man. It's killing me on the inside. Uh, I that I give... What's that? <laughs> I tweeted out last time, like the bit ironic that the biggest downfall of the Sixers and Eagles seasons have both been zone defenses. <laughs> <laughs> uh, gotta give nods to Josh Sweat, who had his best game of his career. He had two tackles for losses and a sack. And then Fletcher Cox, man. Um, not not a standout game, but he had a standout moment where at one point you thought his arm came off. He ran to the tent, came back on the field, and then boom, he forced an Ezekiel Elliott fumble. I think it was sometime in that like third quarter that was just a huge momentum shift. Um, major, major play. Um, but we go right back to the offense because we have to give love to some of these like randoms, right? These randoms like um, <laughs> Greg Ward Jr., had a huge game, four catches for 70 yards. Call him Jason Navant because all he did was catch first down after first down in major crucial moments in this game. And Greg Ward, I've been a guy who's been a huge Greg Ward fan. I've been pro Greg Ward. I I thought they should have gotten rid of Mac Hollins from the jump and signed Greg Ward and kept him on the 54. Um, Dude, four catches for 71 yards he's the number one receiver on your philadelphia eagles what was your take on greg ward man i mean i will definitely you were i've been on these party on broads you have said that since the jump i will give you complete props for that but i mean, <laughs> i don't run. again like i said i really hadn't had a chance to watch much games recently until this sunday and i really just thought all the hype was like it was 2017 he was bright strikes like it was just like this practice squad receiver that was exceeding expectations that everybody thought was fantastic. I mean, after watching the game, he was pretty solid. I mean, he had some nut, he was a good route runner. He was getting some good yards after catch. So, I mean, he's not built to be, he could be a starting wide receiver. He's not built to be a number one wide receiver. And I think that 12 personnel with Ertz and Goddard, which we'll talk about Goddard a little bit later, has really helped out a lot. And Miles Sanders kind of exceeding his expectations as a receiver back. In my preseason, article on my opinion, I wasn't expecting him to be much of a receiving back, and he has proved me completely wrong. He has been great at that, catching screens, routes, been fantastic at all, but I really think that's helped open up the passing game a lot. Yeah, and then we get to the other random I want to talk about is uh, Jay Jaw, who really set the tone for this game, man. We finally saw his height. We didn't really... We haven't seen any real red zone threat by Jay Jaw at all this season, which is what he is. And this... First play of the game, we see what, like a 20 some yard pass to JJ down the middle of the field. He had two catches for 39 yards. But we got to talk about the top two players on offense, which is Miles Sanders and Dallas Goddard, man. Uh, Miles Sanders had 157 yards of offense on 25 carries. What was your take on Miles Sanders, man? He's been fantastic. The one gripe I have about him that I've kind of had since the preseason I talked about my article, but he's kind of been getting better at each week is he cuts the ball out too much. He isn't, he doesn't, he, you've got these, 
ridiculously expensive offensive linemen that are paid that way for a reason. They are very good. He just needs to trust them a little bit. He needs to trust them with their box. And sometimes it's a good pay to cut out. He's done that, but you can't be cutting out as much as he does. And he's kind of, when he bounces it out, these defensive ends are there and they're taking him for yards for loss. But I mean, really besides that, he's been great. I mean, he does make those good reads most of the time. I mean, obviously, he can't be perfect, but he's been making them a great amount of time. He's been getting good yards. He's been running hard. He's been great. He really has been. I mean, I really do fully. I've started to finally see him. I didn't really see it at the beginning of the year, but I'm finally starting to see him as the running back of the future for the Philadelphia Eagles, without a doubt. The more the Eagles kind of unlimit his carries and touches per game, I think the Eagles are only going to get better and better as the season progresses, 25 touches in this game. Man, that should be consistent, at least versus the Giants next week, and at least if they win and get into the playoffs. And then we have Dallas Goddard. This was the Goddard game. Uh, nine catches for 91 yards, a touchdown. Dude, I don't even know where to begin with Dallas Goddard. What was your take on Dallas? I mean, he did fantastic. I mean, like, there was that one drive early in the game where I felt like they went to him five plays in a row and he called every single one of them. He was playing great. Like you mentioned, this was probably his best game as an Eagle so far. And the only bad one was that it was the wheel router, it was the deep ball, and he cut inside and went kind of faded towards the sideline. There's a little bit of miscommunication there. I don't know who was at fault there. But, I mean, besides that, he really did play well. I mean, I really don't have any faults for him. I mean, he's just been... He's had a little bit of a rough start, but he's been getting better and better. And again, I really do feel like he's going to be a very successful player in the NFL, just his age and his talent he's had so far. He had that uh, six-yard touchdown pass from Wentz in that first quarter. And then he had seven catches and 60 yards in the first half, man. We talked about J.J. setting a tone. Let's talk about Dallas Goddard setting a tone. And then we, last, before we wrap this up, we got to talk a, a little bit of the negatives. There were... Doug Peterson's play calling still freaking bothers me, man. Like, there has been several times in this game, especially when the Eagles had many chances to put this game away, especially in that second half, and they let the momentum get away with them. And a lot of that has to do with the play calling. There has been times where it was either third and short, fourth and short, just QB sneak it, man. That has been a continuous problem all year. What, what's your what's your overall take on the play calling? I mean, there's I love how he's bold. I love that. I, I love it. Feel I feel like I'm mad and I'm 11 again, going for an old pass. I love it. I can't. I'm like a, I'm like a gambler. It's like I love. It's like damn. Like if he makes it, it's awesome. But if he if he misses, it, like, why would he do that? But I mean, I, I love I love that. The one thing that he does that drives me crazy is it, sometimes it feels like he does the opposite of what should be done. Jordan Howard's running the ball very well. Let's start passing the ball. Like, it just messes everything up. That third and one and fourth and one where you throw it back to back may be crazy. Like, you don't just run the ball once. Like, I mean, what's going to hurt? I mean, and then screen. I mean, he threw a screen on third and 22. Those they complete. Like, why are you throwing screens on third and 22? I just, I mean, maybe, I mean, I could be right wrong. Maybe it was trying to get a field goal range. That could very well be the point. But it was just, it drives me a little bit crazy sometimes to hit that. 100%. <laughs> but I mean, 100%. I mean, but overall, I mean, it's a very, it's something, I mean, he's, I wouldn't, nah, I wouldn't say he's a coach. No, he's, he's an NFL coach. He knows what he's doing. I mean, he obviously needs to work, work that stuff out. I think he will work that stuff out. He's a, he's a Super Bowl winning coach for a reason. I think, he'll, I think he's trying to test things out, see how things are going, but I'm not too completely worked up about it. And then the other main negative is Jake Elliott. We got to touch a little bit on Jake Elliott, who missed two major field goals that, they were just almost, they were nearly backbreakers in this game. Um, is, is that reason to be concerned heading into New York uh, versus the Giants next week? What, what do you think? Not at all. I mean, he's been fantastic, fantastic this entire season. There's a reason we signed him a four-year extension. Kickers all have bad games. And it's not like these were chip shots. It's not like these were 25s or wide left. It's not like it was uh, with his Flair Walsh against the Seahawks like six years ago in Minnesota. Like, these are 53 and 55-yard field goals. He looked the big one versus Miami, though, man. I, again, like I said, I really haven't had a chance to watch a lot of these recently. So, I mean, from what I've seen, he's been decently, but I really don't feel like it's that much cause for concern. All right, man. Um, the Eagles defeat the Dallas Cowboys 17-9, to move to 8-7 and seven on the season. If 
The Eagles beat the Giants next week. We win the division. Uh, Woosa, Woosa. Follow Jack on Twitter at Jack Connell TPL. Make sure you check out his NBA podcast post position uh, for Jack, for myself. Go Birds, baby. Go Birds. Stay awesome. Westbrook. You love the Philadelphia Eagles. Let me get a hell yeah.